Hey you guys, this is The Legend of Korra, Season 2, Book 2, Spirits, Episodes 1 and 2 review. Gave us two two episodes, which is really nice. I like how Nickelodeon does that sometimes. Gives us a whole hour, uh, sometimes season premiere and season finale sometimes. And I like how they do that. Uh, so let me state the one thing I asked for and I got right away. Uh, I asked for the avatar state to be used more often and apparently Korra can use the avatar state anytime she wants to now, which is really cool. Uh, better than uh, better than Aang actually. I don't think Aang could use it anytime he wanted to. I don't think he had that ability. He had to be in like in full blown desperation mode before he even got the chance. So we see a couple new characters come in the fold. Uh, Boomy, Tenzin's brother, Tenzin's older brother. He comes in. Uh, I like him. He's good for laughs. Uh, we have Aang's other daughter that comes in. She may be actually be a waterbender. That'll be cool to see her power. So I'm pretty sure if she is a waterbender, then she is bending the heck out of some water. And I can't wait to see her in action. Uh, we also have Kor's uncle, Uncle uh, Unalak, Unalak. Um, and he knows how to control the spirit somehow. And we're also introduced to Uncle Unalak's twin children, which seem identical in every way possible. Hopefully they progress and get some individuality throughout the season. The whole cast ends up back in the Southern Waller tribe for an annual festival where we see the first spirits that actually commenced the attack and we see Uncle Unalak in in charge this time. We see him doing his you know his yoga thing and getting everything in order, putting the spirits to, putting the spirits to bed. You no know, heads and beds, heads and beds. He put them spirits to sleep. Uh, we also see what Tenzin and um, Kor's father is capable of. Absolutely nothing. Apparently, um, conventional bending is useless against these spirits. So, our character is going to have a tough time against these guys. I don't know what we're going to do with them right now. Uh, Uncle Unalak is a good person to have on your side right now. Definitely. And he, he basically tells Tenzin that, you know, the air temple is going to be useless. It's, it's not going to help Korra further her abilities as an avatar. And uh, he wants to take her under his wing. Core agrees, you know, after seeing him in action, they're like, okay, you know, you know what you're doing. I apparently don't because I got my ass handed to me and I was in Avatar State. And speaking of that, I know I asked for Core to go to Avatar State in the battle mode, but it's uh, the way she's using it, I can't really condone it because I remember back in the day when Aang was going to Avatar mode, it was actually risky for him because if he actually got really hurt in Avatar mode, he would be no longer be able to do it. And so I'm scared that that will happen to Korra and I definitely don't want to see that happen to her. Shout out to my man Bolin because he is the tension reliever around here. Everything is real tense. You know, Korra is talking with her father and stuff. She's not really feeling him right now. Uh, we learned a little bit about Korra's father and uh, his backstory. We learned that he was actually banished from the Northern Tribe. He was actually set to be the leader of the Northern Tribe. And he was banished from it because he's uh, basically uh, decimated holy ground that wasn't supposed to be done. And he uh, he faced the retaliation of the spirits. And that got him kicked out of his hometown by his own father too, no less. So that's pretty messed up. I can't really blame him com completely because he didn't know what he was up to. He just wanted to make sure whoever attacked the village didn't come back and try to do it again. Get rid of the threat for good. Can't blame the man for that. Uh, Cora, you know, I really liked how she was talking to her father. You gotta respect your father, Cora. Um, she actually ended up banishing him. So, th this man has been banished by his own father and his own daughter. Yeah, so that's some tough apples for him. As Uncle Unalak, as her official new teacher, Cora enters the spiritual forest in the Southern Water Tribe and tries to restore peace with the spirits. She ventures in by herself and she's actually happy that she has the freedom to make her own choices now as opposed to being oppressed by her uh, previous teachers and her father. 
ultimately she is successful at um, restoring the spiritual the spiritual equilibrium in the southern water tribe and we see the lights in the sky it means the spirits are at peace and they're dancing around the sky and all that good stuff but really you don't learn nothing new about the situation Korra just activated the avatar state mode touched a piece of ice bam we there we good uh, I really want to see like some more development with her like you know okay I actually went in the spirit room okay I actually used my mind over matter mind over matter Korra mind over matter and then we have the ending and uh oh, I don't trust this Uncle Unalak dude. I mean, he's bringing all these ships over from the Northern Wall to try. I mean, for what purpose? What purpose could they really be for? But for domination. I don't like this. It looks like we can't trust anybody in the Wall to try right now. Let me get some. <laughs> let me get some feedback from y'all. What y'all think about this guy? Me, I'ma call it. I'ma say this. Uncle Unalak dude is going to be the last dude Korra's going to have to fight in the end of the season. He's going to be the, the main antagonist. And I hate to see it because she could go through some, some mental stuff through that. Seeing that that's her uncle and stuff like that. But I am I think it's going to happen that way. Alright. So that's the end of my basically the whole episode. I'm going to go ahead and call it right here. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and tune in next time. Next week.